What good fortune then to be able to practice the Dharma in a state of happiness like this. And there are people who are really happy. They, they're very content. They feel that I can listen to as many classes as I want. I can practice the Dharma and my family, friends all uh, support me and I have my own savings and I'm in good mood often. I don't have wrong view or difficulties with others. I think I only need maybe two more days to attain the supreme realization of the Mahati. They would feel that with the blessings of the three jewels um, or maybe because of the fruition um, from the previous uh, virtuous actions they've done in previous lifetimes, they feel that their present lifetime is very meaningful. So from now on, in whatever way I can, uh, since I have such good fortune, I must convert this happiness into Dharma. And then from the Dharma, happiness and well-being will continuously arise. This then means that maybe because of your previous uh, accumulated merits, uh, in this lifetime you still have the opportunity to, pra to practice the Dharma. And because of that, this kind of happiness is still... Um, it, it, you still have this kind of happiness in this lifetime. But nowadays, for worldly people, I think the non-practitioners, maybe they have all kinds of favorable conditions and happiness, such as, uh, uh, such as wealth, such as all kinds of conditions. But they don't really use it on studying the Dharma. They don't use it on propagating the Dharma or benefiting others. They only use their favorable conditions to get distracted more into the worldly preoccupations. There are happiness for non-practitioners as well, but is that kind of ha uh, happiness going to be virtuous cycle? If you don't know how to invest your happiness, then um, it could become the cause of suffering, and happiness is difficult to gain. So we should then invest it very uh, wisely. When you already have happiness, it is the best not to get distracted in this happiness. Do not squander it. You rather, it is best to rather spend that happiness in uh, practice. Previously, we've already talked about how there are people uh, who don't have freedom or who are constantly in a state of um, in a state of uh, rather uh, constrained, uh, then in this way, even if you practice aesthetic, and then um, you can't even gain the worldly wisdom, according to Abhinishka Kramana Sutra, it says that the hardships and aesthetic practices in one's body uh, and uh, the afflictions burning in one's mind, through all of those, if one do not have genuine wisdom, then um, if, if the worldly, if you can't even have the worldly wisdom, then you can't gain the uh, transmundane uh, merits for sure. So you have to first of all have the freedom and happiness and then once you have it, you should uh, you should use that to study the Dharma. Uh, that's how I can train in making Dharma and happiness support one another. To make sure that they can support one another is quite important. According to the Sutra of Collected Essential Teachings, it says that if one practice virtuous deeds, uh, then one will eventually 
re uh, gain the supreme happiness. I think at least nowadays, people have the opportunity to listen to the Dharma, to learn the Dharma. This is really quite rare. I, I, I think that in one's lifetime, you could encounter all different sorts of things. But the most important of all, the most um, important merit of all is to have the opportunity to study and contemplate and practice the Dharma. And with the cause of this, then in the future, you will definitely be receive more happiness because at that time then uh, the because at that time you will be able the the fruition of uh, the previous merits will come to uh, maturation and then at the time you still you will have more opportunity to practice virtuous deeds again which could lead to more happiness again in such a way it is a virtuous cycle but without such kind of cycle if you were to create the devious or um, uh, misdeeds first, then you will continue to suffer in samsara and it's really meaningless. So when we have happiness, do not grasp onto it, but to use this happiness uh, on the Dharma. I hope people who are sitting here, um, it is hard to say what's going to happen the rest of your life, majority of which will be going with the force uh, of your own karma and conditions. Uh, but in general, I think even if you have some opportunity in this year to listen to the Dharma, even if you have uh, the opportunity to listen to the Dharma uh, in 10 months or so, you should feel that well, my life uh, is really meaningful. This is the most meaningful and the most uh, memorable part of my life. You should consider, uh, you should think about it in such a way. When you have the opportunity, you probably don't know how to cherish it yet. Just as when your parents are still alive, you really don't feel their, um, their their importance, but once they die, they pass away, you would feel that you must have been, you, you were really happy when, you, when your parents were still uh, alive. So when you have this kind of um, opportunity to listen to the Dharma, you probably won't feel much about it, but when you don't have the opportunity, you probably would feel that, oh, I must have been much, very happy back then. And then it says that um, the main point to get here is that whatever happiness, whatever well-being comes our way, we must unite it with Dharma practice. Otherwise, it's like just try, uh, trying to boil water in a wooden uh, saucepan. So at the beginning, maybe we have happiness, we listen to the Dharma and so on, but we didn't cherish it, we didn't use that opportunity to generate more happiness and more virtuous deeds. Um, or maybe at the beginning, um, maybe you created some wrong deeds or wrong aspiration or misdeeds, really. Um, and you squandered the causes for your happiness, just like when you want to charge some, uh, charge your battery. If uh, you do not charge your battery, then you would not have uh, any, you were not able to use it anymore. So just like that, if you were to, to boil water in a wooden saucepan, then at the end, you would end up having nothing at all. Uh, so that's how people would lose their happiness it's a, it's really the same thing there are practitioners who, who would practice very diligently um, but then later on because of other conditions maybe the wrong friends wrong circumstances wrong uh, habitual patterns and so on they ended up not receiving anything at all not gaining anything at all um, so at the end it's really quite a pity if uh, they started off with happiness but ended up having nothing therefore we have to make sure that our mind is um, infused with the uh, right teaching with the genuine dharma so when you're happy, uh, for example, you are on a summer field trip, and you should think that all the sentient beings in the three uh, in the three realms. 
they must want to receive, they, they must want more uh, so that they can be contented. Therefore, I must then uh, make a dedication of merit to all of them so that they may receive whatever I have. This is a very simple practice. Uh, for example, you could think, oh, this stinky tofu tastes so good. Why don't you try it? So not only you would enjoy it, you can think of to share such happiness with others, with the sentient beings. If you you feel a little bit stingy, however, um, just as some practitioners would say that I don't really want to give it to you, but I can visualize to give it to you. Is it really visualizing? Well, I can only visualize to give it to you. Is that really giving? <laughs> So this is how to unite happiness to our uh, practice. For example, if you're really happy today, um, just as how the previous master said that one should not squander the happy moment nor the suffering moment. What does that mean? It means that, first of all, when you're enjoying, when, when you're enjoying happy moments, you should, uh, you should think about if you are using this opportunity to practice the genuine dharma. When you're happy, you should contemplate that this happiness is very, in, uh, very, um, impermanent and this happiness is um, bestowed by the three jewels and uh, I would like to also share this happiness with all the sentient beings in such a way that you won't squander the happiness but you would have more happiness so you shouldn't waste the suffering experiences any any uh, in any ways either because even if you are con you are going through very difficult sufferings if you were to complain um, and uh, so on then this kind of suffering would be wasted um, but if you were to practice uh, or use the suffering as a practice and just as the previously stated in this text uh, thinking that I'm suffering a lot at the sentient beings in this uh, samsara is suffering a lot I really wish them could attain enlightenment as soon as possible um, and if someone would give you um, a needle shot and you would first of all think um, it's very scary it's painful and then at that moment you can think that okay may I receive all of the suffering coming from all the sentient beings and in this way the suffering and pain from a, a, a needle shot would not be squandered when people are happy um, they would laugh really they would laugh out loud and uh, when the non-practitioners are unhappy they would cry out loud and they don't have any deep practices but for practitioners we should really use any experiences in our life uh, into the path of enlightenment so the practitioners are really very different than the non-practitioners because when they're happy they would feel that oh all the happiness in this world are all like dreams and illusion um, I would I myself uh, sometimes when I walk on the uh, on the metal I would see some skulls and bones of the dead yaks and I would uh, contemplate that while the yaks were happy ones walking on this metal and enjoy himself but then eventually we will all be like like uh, the the yak that is now that is ju just a pile of bones and skull um, so in this way you would generate a genuine um, renunciation and uh, thinking about impermanence so there are many ways of practicing with the happiness and suffering this is the whole vision behind Nagarjuna's garland of jewels uh, because in the garland of jewels it says that uh, to enjoy wealth in this lifetime And uh, to uh, offer your um, your wealth to the others, you will enjoy the happiness in uh, in other lifetimes. Uh, the, there are many conditions uh, for death. And there are many conditions for birth. Uh, there are much less conditions for birth. Um, so we should cherish all the opportunities and conditions to practice the Dharma. So there are many teachings uh, such as this uh, that is included in the Garland of Jewels. Uh, jewels. 
This is the um, this is the whole vision behind this teaching. In fact, 